Hey, and welcome back. There is tons of really interesting science news this weekend. What about this? So I can confirm that the Department of Defense was tracking a high altitude object over Alaska airspace in the last 24 hours. Out, uh, the, uh, the object was flying at an altitude of uh, 40,000 feet and posed a reasonable threat to the safety of civilian flight. Out of an abundance of caution and at the recommendation of the Pentagon, President Biden ordered the military to down the object. And they did. And it came in inside our territorial waters. Now, those waters right now are frozen, but inside uh, territorial uh, airspace and over territorial waters. Fighter aircraft assigned to U.S. Northern Command took down the object within the last hour. We're calling this an object because that's the best description we have right now. Uh, we do not know who owns it, uh, whether it's a whether it's state owned or, or or corporate owned or privately owned. We just don't know. Uh, we don't we don't know. As I said, state owned. We don't know if it's state owned, um, and we don't uh, understand the full purpose. We don't have any comp we don't have any information that would confirm a stated purpose for this object. Um, we do expect to be able to recover uh, the debris. Uh, since it fell not only within our territorial space, but on what we what we uh, believe is is frozen uh, water, so uh, it, uh, a recovery effort will be made, um, and uh, uh, we're hopeful that it'll be successful, and then we can learn a little bit more about it. That's so exciting that whatever it was they shot down is actually on ice, so I'm sure they've already recovered it, and I can't wait to find out what exactly. It was. And talking about large things in the sky, the Chinese spy balloon isn't what you think it is. People write to me and I've received two bits of information about the spy balloon that I didn't know. I can share with you today. First of all, look at this high resolution picture of the thing underneath the balloon. You can't believe how big it is. The size of those antenna are bigger in wingspan than a regional jet. And the scuttlebutt is it was ELIT, electronic surveillance. But here's an interesting twist. Was it gathering data or actually picking up previously recorded data from embedded Chinese stuff in US electronics. One of the more outlandish but interesting theories about Oumuamua was that it was an alien spacecraft picking up and downloading drone data that had been gathered for centuries by the aliens in our solar system. Were the Chinese doing the same, flying over and triggering embedded secret recording devices, which then dumped the data up to the balloon transmitted back to China. I don't know. But I do now know why this bird, a peregrine falcon, is the same as an SR-71 engine. Peregrine falcon is the fastest creature on our planet. It can dive at 200 miles an hour. I didn't know it hits its prey and decapitates a mouse killing it instantly. But just like the secret spy plane, it has a problem, and that is the air going in its nostrils or in its engines is going too fast to actually use. In the SR-71 engines, I know that you know about the movable spikes that go in and out, slowing the air down so the engine can use it. And the supersonic airliner Concorde had the same problem, and it fixed it with a movable floor, which bent the air and slowed it down before it was ingested into the engines. But how does the bird do it? Well, scientists this week have discovered that a peregrine falcon's nostril has a special bony structure in the center of it, here it is, which deflects the air around it, slowing it down in its 200 mile an hour dive and not killing the bird. And the seaside diving bird, a gannet, also has to block its nostrils. 
When it's born, the nostrils are open, but as it gets into a teenager state and starts diving into the water, a piece of cartilage, a bit like our ear or our nose, grows at the front of its nostril, and when it hits the water, the cartilage, poof, the flap closes, blocking the air, and then when it pops out of the water with its large pop, the nostril reopens so it can breathe. The wonders of nature. And here's some really stinky science news. Hydrogen sulfide, rotten egg, stink gas. It's actually produced by lots of processes in the chemical industry, and it's pretty useless. Well, it's overproduced as a byproduct. But it can be broken down using tremendous heat into water, combining the hydrogen with oxygen and sulfur. That process uses a lot of energy and locks up the abundant hydrogen as water. Wouldn't it be great if you could separate hydrogen sulfide into hydrogen gas and sulfur? Well, yeah, can. Using a nano-sized gold catalyst and sunlight and no external energy, a new process can split the nasty, stinky hydrogen sulfide into hydrogen gas and sulfur. How perfect's that? I love waking up in the morning and researching science stories for you. If this is the kind of thing you enjoy, subscribe to the channel and maybe this week we'll find out what the flying object really was that crashed onto the Alaskan ice. Stay tuned, because the truth is out there.